All right, so now we're going to be looking at EDP and past paper questions and answers 20, 2099. Number one says, a computer system is made up of input and output devices. Define the term output device. What is an output device? Peripherals used to display information. Isn't that so? Peripherals used to display information. Could be a monitor, it could be a printer. Printer give you a hard copy of it, your monitor give you a soft copy of it. Am I correct? Yes. Please know the difference between output and output devices. Devices are the, 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 the equipment or the peripherals used to carry out your output function. Output is the procedure of displaying your information or the function. It's a function, right? Mm -hmm. List three output devices. Well, I listed two just now. Printers. Multimedia projector, speaker, monitor, and the list goes on and on. All right. There are two types of software that are, allow the computer to work effectively. List these two types of software. And of course, you know, what are they? Application software and your system software. Don't doubt yourself, you are correct. Application software and your system software. You notice every year these questions come back application software and system software? Yes, they come back every year. Then it says, take the major function of each of the types of software listed in A. What's the major function of your application software? We spoke about it earlier. To use Microsoft Excel and Word and whatever to perform your daily tasks, right? That's the major function, to, to, to use it to perform your daily tasks. Isn't that so? Yes. What about your system software? The major function of your system software is to what? Be the liaison or the interface between the user or among the user, the software and the hardware. Da da dee. Da da da. Please know them. Give one example of each type of software. And when we discuss it just now, we did give an example. So for an application software, Microsoft Word or Microsoft Excel. Yes. And for system software? Yes. And for system software, you would have Microsoft Windows, Mac OS, and the list goes on. Paint is an application software, not a system software. All right? So you're talking about Microsoft Windows operating system, Mac operating system. Mac is the short name for what? Macintosh, right? Apple uses it. Yeah. Apple uses it. Linux is one. Very good. Unix. See? It's coming back. Unix is another. All right. Number three. In order to set up and maintain an electronic filing system, EFS, certain tasks should be completed. I won't go through this question again because Tuesday we did this very same question. You see how important it is to know about electronic filing system because they oftentimes repeat questions like these. All right, so let me move to 3B. When naming files, there are specific file extensions that may be used for the various file types. 
These again is coming back. Quick, quick review. Document what file extension should be attached or would be attached to a document. Dot D O C or dot D O C X. Photograph. Dot JPG or dot JPEG. Photograph. Files containing codes. Very good. Dot EXE. Very good. Number four. List five punctuation marks that are commonly used in document production. Full stop, comma, semicolon, apostrophe colon. All right. Let us look at 4B. Write the manuscript signs for each of the following spaced caps. What manuscript sign represents spaced caps? The one with the three lines. Yes, the one with the three lines underneath it. Very good. Right? Stacked. Sometimes you see SP dot caps. Once you see SP dot caps, it also means space caps. But most times you will see the three lines going across under the word for it to be in space caps. All right? State. What represents state? Right? The tick in the circle. Very good. What else? The dotted line going across under a word or the dash line. Yes. One more. Um, there's a line that runs through it. Yes. So you can have a line run. No. Step means to leave unchanged. All right. So you have step. Oh, the other one would be step. Step. The one in the circle with the tick and the dash line go, go, going under. Yes. Right under the word. The dash line right under the word or that is line right under the word. Yes. Those three represents unchanged. You leave it unchanged. Three, delete. What represents delete? The line now going across, strike through. The line striking through the word means to delete. What else? The pi. Very good, the pi sign. What else? Look like a, it look like a, a, a half, a half. Like a, half, a half a percentage sign. It looks like a half a percentage sign. Yes. So it has the little dot and the backslash where the other little dot is missing. That's why I say it looks like a half a percentage sign. All right. So once you see those, you know it needs to delete or remove a particular word or a phrase. All right. For transpose. The tilde look inside. Right, so you have an upper bar and a lower bar, right, attached. <laughs> I'm going to show you them shortly. Insert. Um, upside down Y. Upside down Y, very good. And indent. What represents indent? An arrow pointing to the right. Very good. So let me show you them quickly. All right, so the insert right, is right there, which is looks like a, a, a Y upside down. And they delete, look like the half a percentage, and the, and the pi, and the transpose. This is a symbol I, I was trying to describe. Space cap, see there you have SP caps at times, and sometimes you see the three lines under the word. To represent it. Indent, that's the arrow going to the right. And state, that's the dotted line under the word. All right, or the tick in the circle. Number five, 
Sharon Johnson is the administrative assistant to the chairman of the board. She has been instructed to prepare the necessary documents to be circulated before a board meeting. <laughs> List three of the documents that may be prepared. This, this, this is coming again, right? Agenda, a notice of meeting, and minutes of the last meeting. Yes. <laughs> All right. So remember, it's not a memo, but a notice of meeting that is sent out to inform them of the meeting. And they usually have when, where, and what time. Right? All right. Number six. The Beacon organization consists of four persons. A president, a secretary, an accounts clerk, and an office manager. Draw the organization chart for this organization. And what I believe they will do if they bring a question like this in a multiple choice is to have several organization charts with the information and they probably jumble it up and you have to choose one that has it correctly. You understand? All right. So this is what I came up with. So you would have president at the top and under the president you will have the other three. The office manager, the accounting clerk, and the secretary. That's how I would put it. Do you agree? Yes. Crystal, disagree? You agree? All right. Next question. When preparing financial statements on the computer, there are specific types of software that may be used to facilitate the process. This question come back again. Let it stay, let it stay, let it stay. All right, so state one type of software that may be used to do tabulation. Microsoft Excel spreadsheet. Good. State two types of financial statements that can be prepared using the software named at A. Trial balance, profit and loss, income and expenditure, balance sheet, yes. C. Name two types of headings used in advanced tabulation and earlier we looked at some of them oblique vertical and horizontal remember the horizontal one is the one that is start normal so it's at zero degrees oblique now is looking slant and that's 45 degrees and vertical is upright which is 90 degrees Number eight, music piracy is a big issue in the Caribbean. State two types of laws that can be implemented to address the problem. Intellectual property or the copyright law. Yes. And B says define the term plagiarism. Very good. All right. B says there are two guidelines that can be used to avoid plagiarism. You realize plagiarism repeats itself year after year? Yes. What are the guidelines to avoid plagiarism? Right. So you source your reference. So you could put it in a bibliography or a reference list. 
Or you can put it in your own words. You don't use back any of the words of the author. Or you put it in your own words. Right? Very good. You can cite it all as well if it's a reference to your search paper, you cite your sources. Seek permission to if it's a music, suppose it's music or a CD or whatever, you want to use the song for, of somebody, of an uh, um, artist, you make sure you get permission. Because if you use it without their permission, it's plagiarism. And I am guilty of it because I use the song without their permission. <laughs> and they didn't even know that we were plagiarizing. Because sometimes we plagiarize and we don't know that we're plagiarizing. Right? And that's why when people post videos th these days, what they do? They put a disclaimer. They put a disclaimer to say, I'm not the owner of this um, music or whatever. That's what people are doing now, to avoid plagiarism. You know you can be locked up for plagiarism? And serve time for it? Yes. Yes. All right. Number nine says, two additional keys. Let me go further up. Let me go up a little bit. Number nine, the arrow keys are used to navigate within a document on the computer monitor. State two additional keys that may be used to navigate a document. So apart from the arrow keys, what else are used? The enter key. The enter key. What else? And I put this game already. The page up and the page down keys on your keyboard. Your tab keys, right? So these will allow you to move up and down or within your document. All right? Number 10, a secretary has to check the schedule of meetings on a daily basis. She has decided to create a shortcut to the file with the schedules on her desktop. List the four steps she should use to create the shortcut. How do you go about creating a shortcut? First, you have to go where the file is located. So if the file is on your desktop, you go on your desktop. If it's in my document, you go in my document. If it's on your thumb drive, you go on your thumb drive. Are you following? Yes. So once you go where it is located, you then locate the file. Huh? So you click on the file. So whichever file you want to create the shortcut of your what? Click on it, and then you right click and choose the option that says send to. Choose the option that says send to, and then the next step would be where you want to send it. Suppose it's desktop. Well, in this case, it says desktop. So you'd send it to desktop. But you have other places where you can create a shortcut because you can create it in documents too. You can create a shortcut on your thumb drive as well. Isn't that so? Yeah. But according to the question, it says to create it on a desktop. So you have to select the option that says desktop. And everybody's clear on that? Mm -hmm. All right. So that's the end 